It's my favorite time of year. I don't know if it's my favorite time of year, but it's one of my favorite times of year. And the reason for that is because today is the day that I take the little tires off my four wheelers, my ATVs, and my UTVs, and put the big, bad snow tires on them. Which means we're going for a snow adventure. You guys are coming with. So, you know, when I started this, this whole uh, YouTube thing, it was all about showing you guys the real side of my life. You know, the non-TV side where, you know, I actually have a life and I have chores and I have things that I have to do. It turns out you guys really like to see that stuff. So I'm showing you. And basically what's happening today is I'm gonna take you guys up to my cabin. Now my cabin sits at the top of the mountains here in uh, Utah, kind of above my house. And it's unique because I bought it a long time ago and it sits on, you know, government land, forest service land, but we have a lease to be able to have the cabin there. So it's kind of a weird deal. We don't own the land, we own the cabin. Um, the way the forest service set it up, you know, 50, 60 years ago is kind of crazy. Uh, but with that, the forest service comes in and they say, hey, do this, do that, make sure that, you know, you're following all these rules and stuff. Now, a lot of those rules are great. I agree with almost all of them, but there's also some stuff that they come up and kind of nitpick us on, which I don't necessarily agree with, but we kind of just, you know, abide by the rules to keep everybody happy. So they sent me a letter the other day and the letter had a list of things. I guess they went up and did an inspection at the cabin and there's a list of things that they don't like. They want us to fix. Um, there's a propane tank that they don't like. There's a rope swing hanging from a tree that they don't like. There's a stack of firewood and a couple other dumb little things. Do I think the Forest Service could find better uses of time and resources? Absolutely. Like, once you see this rope swing that I'm talking about, you're gonna be like, dude, they, 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 they spent money on a stamp to send you a letter about that? It's kind of ridiculous. This is not me bagging the Forest Service. I know that they have limited resources and they do what they can. And I get along with most of them, actually. The, the Salt Lake Rangers office, um, we've had a love-hate relationship for a long time, but we all get along now. We see eye to eye. They got some new management in there and it's a better group for sure. Um, but still, I don't always agree with the regulations. So I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that we have to do to stay like in good graces with them. And uh, we're gonna go for it. But the trick about today is, and the reason why this is such a such a interesting thing to follow is the canyon that my cabin's at the top of gets closed in the wintertime. Basically no uh, vehicle access for trucks and stuff like that. Now we can take snowmobiles and four wheelers up there because we're able to, you know, work around the gates and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that's allowed. So we have to go pick up, I think it's like 500, maybe a thousand gallon propane tank that the Forest Service doesn't want on my property anymore and it might be full, I can't remember if it's full or not. Anyways, we're gonna go take a couple of four-wheelers up there, my Polaris Sportsman's, and try to get the propane tank nine miles off the top of this gnarly mountain covered in snow. And uh, it snowed all last night, the weather's been ridiculous, it's freezing cold today. Conditions are gonna be wild, this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna put these tires to the test. I'm not putting the tracks on the machines yet because it's funny because the road to get to the cabin starts out paved, and then it goes to dirt, and it's like dirt and gravel, and then it's snow. So driving tracks all the way up that isn't ideal. And I don't know if the snow's deep enough to need tracks yet, but that right there is the big unknown. It could be way deeper up on top than it is down here. We don't really know. So one thing's for sure, somebody's gonna get stuck, but it's gonna make for an adventure. So let's get the tires installed. crazy about these tires is we actually run like like one psi in them when we're actually running them on the four wheelers it takes such little air pressure to keep these things on the bead and a little fun fact about tires in the snow which most of you probably already know this but if you don't lower air pressure means better traction so if you ever find yourself stuck in the snow go to your tires let some air out of them don't take them down to one PSI because unless you have specialty tires or beadlock wheels, well, that's going to be a bad time for me. But, you know, a car tire, you can air down to like 10, 15 PSI to be able to get through the snow. Not like on the freeway. Don't do it on the freeway. You only do it like if you're in a bad situation. So, one thing that you're going to see us do a lot of this winter is testing out different types of 
no vehicles, equipment. See, I'm fascinated with over the snow travel. I've got snow cats, I've got amphibious vehicles, I've got tracks for all my vehicles, and it's just kind of awesome. So what we're gonna try out today, which I tried out last year and I've loved them, and you may have seen them on my machines. These are the Pro Armor Whiteout tires. Now these are like a specifically just for snow tire because well, you can see how wide they are. When we put these things on the four wheelers or the UTVs, they literally go just about as many places as the tracks will go. I mean, it's insane. So right now we're gonna bolt these on um, and you're gonna see these four wheelers just turn into like these big jumbo looking monsters with these tires on them and they're awesome. So starting with the old two seater here literally make any machine look so much cooler. See that? Already way cooler. One more tire to go. This is the Polaris Sportsman. Oh, hey, by the way, did you know that you could have this? Like literally, this could be yours. All you gotta do is smash the subscribe button. When we hit 250,000 subscribers, I'm gonna choose one of you to take home any one of these toys that you want. Any one of these Polaris vehicles, any one of my power sports vehicles, it's gonna be yours. Then when we hit 500,000, bam, another giveaway. 750, bam, million, another giveaway. When we hit 10 million subscribers, I'm giving away a helicopter. So stop what you're doing. I know this is riveting, and this is a moment you don't wanna miss. I promise I'll pause. We're gonna go in the six by six today. We just did a little bit of, uh, did a little updating on it, and, uh, why not take her for a drive, see how she's doing. Bonk. Jimbo, hey buddy. Made it back. It's a fun fact. We're getting into the van business. You may have seen a post I did a little while ago about a, uh, like a transit van or a sprinter van with a crew cab seat in the back. Well, we're doubling down on that. Partnered with the guys that uh, make those conversion kits and we're gonna start building some adventure vans. Basically, you take like a cargo van, we drop a back seat in it with a wall, like a partition, so it's like a crew cab truck, but then it's got a huge cargo area. We can put ramps on them, we can put like campers in them, fit dirt bikes, snowmobiles, you name it. We're at the base of the canyon. From here, we got about what, nine miles? Ten. Ten miles from here to the cabin. Dirt road that's gonna turn to a lot of snow here in a minute, so although it may look nice and breezy right here, you're about to see why this is very uh well it's gonna be quite the endeavor to get this propane tank down we got our sled we got two four-wheelers polaris sportsman 1000 touring edition the polaris scrambler i'm already overloaded as you can see so am i <laughs> <laughs> Today was probably a track day. These tires do really well, but they do better in snow that's had a chance to settle. In new powder, they just kind of fluff around. So we're gonna let the air out of the tires even more, down to like pretty much zero PSI. See ya. Uh, yeah. These ones you almost can't let too much out. Not on the four wheeler, anyways. On the Ranger, you let too much out. I ran these at zero PSI. Time to let some more air out of the tires. This fluffy, light, new snow doesn't pack at all. It's just like pure, like sugar powder. So the four-wheeler with the tires depends on a little bit of traction from the packing of the snow. So the more air we let out, the more surface area we get, the more packing we get. And it doesn't help that somebody went ahead of us. I don't know who it was. It's like they're either in a truck or something that left just big, nasty ruts. You're not supposed to usually take your truck up past the gate this time of year. Against the rules. We made it to the cabin. Um, as you can see, it's way up here. Um, cool little cabin. I bought it uh, 
like one of the first things I bought as soon as I had a little bit of money after we got married. And uh, they're hard to get. Yeah, Jim's been trying to get one for 10 years. But you, you get to get on a waiting list and you just kind of got to sit around and wait till one of the families that owns them sells them. And we just use it pretty much for snowmobiling. Come in here and it's kind of the dude's getaway in the middle of winter. So, like I said, the Forest Service wrote me a letter. That was the front one. No. Oh. Forest Service wrote me a letter that was kind of nice, kind of passive aggressive, but basically said, your rope swing has got to go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's the rope swing that they were concerned about. So <laughs> rather than coming up here and worrying about clearing deadfall and stuff, they, they came up to, to make sure that the, basically a, tie, a toe strap that we hung from a branch gets taken down. Um, it's like four feet long. Try to take those two down while we're at it. Neighbors already fell. Oh yeah, so when the windstorm came through here, we had a huge windstorm a month or so ago here in Utah and it just pushed all these trees down. So they're not, uh, what's funny is you think the Forest Service would come up and be like, hey, we're all gonna get together and we're gonna clear out all the dead fall trees, you know, that, uh, that fell that are fire danger. But instead they came up to take pictures and write me a letter and say, your firewood stack, which is right next to your cabin, is too close to your cabin. You gotta move it 30 feet away. So we're going to take it and move it inside. Um, your rope swing has got to go. Your propane tank, which is certified and fine and no problem. Uh, you can't have two of them, so you got to bring it down. So we got to get that down. So to keep them happy, like I said, I'm not trying to like take jabs with the Forest Service. I'm just saying that I wish that they would put the same amount of time and energy into managing like the actual forest as they do about like being worried about what cabin owners are doing up here because cabin owners, turns out, we're pretty good stewards of the land. You know, this is our cabin, this is where our family hangs out. We want to take good care of it. Last thing we're gonna do is try to make it some dangerous trash hole. Whoop. So is politics. So anyways, as you can see, today was definitely a track day. As I said down at the track, or down at the shop, I said there's a chance that we might get up there and find some deep snow. And normally this type of snow, if it was this deep, the tires would be fine if it had a base. But since this is the first snow of the season, like you go straight to the ground. So we got what? 20 inches of, of just fluff. So when you have a base, you can dig down, get a little bit of traction. When you don't have a base, you do that. You get stuck. So we're gonna move the firewood inside. We're gonna see what we can do about that propane tank. And we're gonna take down that dangerous god awful rope swing. firewood that they're concerned about being a fire hazard. Whoever invented the blue tarp, you can go eat a dick. Seriously. This is just selling, absolutely unacceptable behavior. Selling someone on a great idea and not performing. What doesn't perform is my muck boots on Lavoyum. <laughs> Jim's over there slipping and sliding. <laughs> snowy we get snowed in so having dry wood and the ability to start a fire and keep the family warm overnight is critical welcome to the sparks cabin this is uh this is, we've got a lot of good memories here on oh, Jimbo. Yeah. Normally in the winter time, let me show you. Like I said, this is the backcountry cabin. It's not like 
a big cabin where you have like, you know, family parties and stuff. It's mostly for, you know, our little family, Jim's oh. family. We, oh no. How do we get snow in there? I'm that, guessing. That's a real life mystery. I'm guessing, look up. You see that box, there's that little hole? That was just blowing cold snow in. So how would it fall straight down in the form of snow, not ice, and pile up right there? Yeah, the fact that it came in as pure snow. That's what's is that stuff with snow? That is crazy. That's ash. That's snow. So you're saying. So anyways, normally when the snow hits up here in the deep of the winter, this is the first storm storm of the year, like I said, but normally these windows will be covered. So we'll get like 10 to 12 feet of snow all the way around this thing. And it uh, it's nice and cozy, but we usually have to tunnel in in the winter time when we come up snow building. Either that or take the snow cat, but Forest Service doesn't like our snow cats Ooh, anymore. Yeah, those cheese bowls. Cheesy bowls? Cheesy bowls. It's cup of noodle time. Yeah, get some water. Oh, water going. Get the water bowl. This kind of a, a rule that we have. You can't come to the cabin. And uh, <laughs> what's in there? A little water from last time. Why did it sound like that? It's probably a dead mouth. Yeah, there's no bats in here. What was Cole talking about? Oh, well, they're they're upstairs. <laughs> they're sleeping. <laughs> Actually, a bold move right there. <laughs> that could have been that could have been a much bigger party than we were bargaining for. Oh, dude, something about cup of noodles at the cabin just tastes so much better. Right now, as you can see, the lights aren't on because the generator's not on. It's a very bad country cabin, like I said. There's no power. There's water from a well, and then we're on a set. Basically, huh? Oh yeah, water comes out of the spring. Oh. Snow's been blowing through there. I forgot to fix the door. Last time I came, I forgot the keys. So I just uh, gave the door the old one. The last time? The last three times. The last few times. That, my key last season was basically my foot. But <laughs> you got the family, family right here. You got a couple of little beds in here. That's cool. Little rooms. That's way cool. And down here by the fire, you don't stay super cozy. I got pretty cold in that one night. Huh? I got pretty chilly in that corner one night. Oh, I'll bet. If New somebody doesn't stay up stoking the fire, newborn baby, it's going to be a bad time. And then you got the second floor and the third floor, which is the kids' room. We come up here about 15 times to remodel the place, and then we're always just like, nah, last It has days. a charm. <laughs> it has uh, a charm. Like, I couldn't find this carpet anywhere even if I tried. <laughs> And this uh, is either mat, moth or bat shit. It's kind of a mystery. We've never been able to figure out exactly what, oh. what is raining from above. But the funny thing about this cabin is there's no service up here anywhere except for right here the cabin. And then right here the cabin, the service is just titties. This right here is, uh, oh, that's water on the lens. We're gonna go ahead and clean that real quick. Nothing bugs me more than a dirty lens. There we go. My wife will, will walk around town with like peanut butter on her lens, like taking pictures like it's no big deal. I'm like, no, listen, that's not okay. Under no circumstances is it okay to have such a sloppy, dirty lens. And I, don't, I understand, like she's got kids with her all day long. <laughs> it may sound like she's got kids apart from me. Our kids are with her all day long. But uh, still, dirty lens, no excuse. So this is, the, uh, this is the big concern right here. This is what the Forest Service just couldn't, couldn't quite wrap their head around. Right there is our big main propane tank for the cabin. It's like a thousand gallons. Um, this is our backup tank, a couple hundred gallon tank. Um, both sitting here properly in the right location, no big deal, but somebody decided that two tanks is, is a terrible, terrible idea. Two tanks? And uh, it's full, don't worry. <laughs> She's full to the brim. <laughs> um, not, even, not even in like the, no, the stop zone. Even it's never even been full. touched. So, nice. unfortunately, it's full, which makes it uh, a lot more work to move. But uh, anyways, 
we got to be able to figure out how to get this down the canyon. So I'm going to try to probably pull the four-wheeler around right here and we'll give it a couple tugs and see if it wants to move. From there, hopefully we can kind of roll it into the toboggan and get it down the mountain because, uh, well, apparently it's causing a problem up here. As you can tell, I'm a little, I'm a little salty towards some of these rules and regulations when you see around me the whole forest like massive trees are falling down everywhere from a huge windstorm but nobody's doing anything about those i'm sure i'll have to come back up next spring and, and work on those but that right there is the reason why forest fires just rage out of control because deadfall is not controlled it's not taken care of back in the day they used to let people come up and log and take get you know get rid of it and so you'd be able to recycle and renew the materials now there's all these rules you just can't touch it just leave it there let it rot and as it rots it brings bugs um, fungus infestation it also causes massive fires it's like fuel for the fires on the floor of the forest which is just it just doesn't does it make sense to you jim what talk about make sense to me is how we're going to move this thing yep and the safety factor of it the safety factor <laughs> What's that? Okay, hold on. Since when did you ever say safety factor? You're not allowed to say safety factor. Safety guy. You're not the safety guy, Jim. You can be any guy, any guy, but not the safety guy. I own a hard hat. <laughs> you don't own a hard hat. It's Buddy Harry's that he left in your truck. No, it's mine. You'd leave at home. He wishes he had it. <laughs> you stole it from Harry. So this is our tank. It Try may not look like much. Try and roll it. That's uh, frozen. Try and wiggle it. All right, well, let's wiggle it. That's the wood movie. Frozen. Oh shit! Did you just bonk your head? Yeah. <laughs> Hard. I'm gonna grab the four wheel and just give her a tug right here. Oh man. There's no way it's that heavy. <laughs> There's no look, way. look up the propane propane weights. How much? 120 gallons. Twenty water gallons. That should be same. It's beautiful up here. Thousand water pounds. Four point two pounds per gallon. So that's forty. So much heavier than that. So that's hundred and twenty gallons so that's that's 500 pounds at least that's more now why did it say a thousand water pounds because water is eight point uh two pounds per gallon oh 120 yeah cubic per gallons 120 gallons thousand water pounds look up how much is a full 120 gallon propane tank weigh 120 gallons of propane is 4.2 pounds per gallon. Five hundred and four. Definitely not light. No. Sled's not gonna like that. Oh come on. You're lucky it's not a regular old sled. It's the ants toboggan. Think we're getting this down? Yeah, we probably will, but it's questionable whether it's a good idea or not. Oh, I left the water on. Mm. That's gonna need to be replaced. It's all right. This shit's stuck at the bottom of it. I'm gonna go, let's go back up. Let me hold it, you push that one under, or you do opposite, vice versa. Okay. Let's get this dirt off of it. Doesn't help we're trying to haul off a bunch of pounds of dirt. And now 
we're getting somewhere. What do we, uh... We don't like the idea to turn the, port, the torch on full tilt for an hour? I think that's gonna... Let's take down the, the super dangerous rope swing. I think that's a one-man job. Yeah, I got that. What a shame. My kids love this thing. I'm gonna have to cut while I'm on it. One last swing for the boys. <laughs> yep. Don't stab yourself. <laughs> She's still so heavy. It didn't drain very much. All right. So we're about halfway through our adventure. Came up to the cabin to obviously take care of some issues that the Forest Service had with the property. Uh, one giant stack of wood that was stacked outside the cabin. Got it cleaned up, picked up, moved inside, away from the cabin, no longer fire hazard. Two the dangerous rope swing pulled down from the tree, no longer a hazard. And number three, the giant propane tank uh, that was full of propane that we have to remove from the premise, which is still, well, we haven't got that part done yet. Getting the toboggan unloaded right now because this is what we're gonna hopefully pull the tank down with. The snow ended up being way deeper and way more unstable than we were anticipating. So really we need track vehicles, but we don't have them right now. They're down in the shop. so. We're gonna make do with the tires on the quads. And see what we can come up with. So what we gotta to try to figure out now is how to get the propane tank out of that side of the cabin, load it into the toboggan, down the mountain. I'll tell you what really sucks is moving furniture up this hill in about four feet of snow. One year, I decided to surprise Ashley with uh, some new couches for the cabin. And we couches. decided to bring couches, beds. Couches, beds, dressers, logs frames and yeah. tables. Yeah, yeah, I went, I went, I went fully all furnished. out. It was fully furnished. And we brought it up behind a snowcat on a trailer and could only get to about right there. And then we hiked it all uphill in like, it was a fresh storm. It probably had to be six feet of snow. Sure. That was, we that, that sucked. And I was yeah, I thought you were gonna have a stroke that day. But yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, there we go. Trying to get these things here. Hold that. There we go. That should. Let's we take this guy. Go like this. Don't use the shovel. We're, le we're leaking. Leaking liquid? No. Something's, something's leaking out of here. comes. 
you guide it down so those feet are sitting in the bottom here. That'd be nice. And then the tail is too long, so it's going to have to hang out the back, right? <laughs> let's, uh, let's get it down nose first. Slide this down. Yep. Take over on the back. Do you want me to use a strap? Oh, that's so heavy. Get plenty heavy. There she comes. Close. Turn that slide if I can. <laughs> Look at that. Not bad. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. We'll go from all the liquid in there still. <clears throat> this is a lot heavier than it looks. It's full. It's probably still with the tank and the fuel. I bet it's a solid 500 pounds still. Which, moving around, frozen, in a couple feet of snow. I promise you, it looks easier than it really is. Make sure that gets back over there. Whoop. Okay. Oh, it's not exactly slick snow scooting either. Scooting along. Oh, get over. The uh, propane tank is too heavy to pull out with the four wheelers with tires since we were already struggling with traction as it was. So basically, what we've done. We got the firewood moved, rope swing cut down, got all the other stuff taken care of. So what we're gonna do next is uh, come back up with the four wheelers on tracks to be able to pull the propane tank down because we just don't have the traction we need right now. We're also probably gonna bring a bigger toboggan or maybe a couple of big inner tubes and blow them up underneath the... Uh, do a tube on each side. Yeah, a tube on each side of it. Blow them up and uh, toboggan it down the mountain because that thing is big and awkward so not gonna get it today well it was a successful day even though we didn't get the propane tank down because well conditions were much gnarlier than anticipated and uh look at the sunset that's gonna be a pretty one anyways um conditions snow was way deeper than we anticipated and uh, the propane tank was way heavier because it ended up being full. So we got to empty it out a little bit and then come back up with some tracked machines and uh, finish the job. So stay tuned for that because that's probably gonna be a separate vlog showcasing what a tracked machine can do. You saw what the tires can do, which this wasn't really a fair shake for the tire machines because the snow was just like no base. So <laughs> we'll bring them back up and show you tires versus tracks. How about that? Thank you.